Good morning. It is Thursday the 5th of January 2023. As I sit writing this reflection, it is a few days after Christmas, in that period when you don't know what day of the week it is, and I'm thinking about all the food which has been consumed over the festive period. How did you do with your Christmas dinner? Did you cook enough to feed the whole street and are still eating turkey curry and turkey sandwiches? Did you get it just right? Or, like us, did you cook enough so that you've got some leftovers because bubble and squeak a few days later is a favourite meal? Feeding family and friends over Christmas may well have been a big challenge for some as the cost of living crisis bites and food prices have rocketed. I'm continually amazed at how inflation has hit food prices and how the cost of food cupboard staples are still rising week by week. At Christmas, we are encouraged to indulge by the food retailers, to have those extra special treats, which we don't usually buy, to make Christmas easy by buying pre-prepared vegetables, and at 19p for a bag of potatoes, carrots, parsnips and sprouts in the big supermarkets, to buy more than we need. When I lived in Ilkley as a teenager, I would walk home from town past the Quaker Meeting House on Queen's Road. I vividly remember a poster that they sometimes had upon their display boards. It simply said, There is enough in the world for everyone's need, but not everyone's greed. Something which has stuck with me, and which I believe is still very true. In our world, the distribution of food is very unequal. There are places with an abundance of food, full fields, full supermarket shelves, full fridges and cupboards, and yet there are countries where crops have failed due to lack of rain, and where people are starving due to lack of food. On Christmas Eve, Otley Methodist Church sang carols at the Buttercross in the centre of town and had a collection for the local food bank. Food bank use has increased enormously in the UK, and families from all walks of life, including those where parents work, are finding themselves unable to afford to put food on their tables, or are having to choose between heating and eating. Again, the distribution of food is very unequal. In our world, over a third of all food produced globally goes to waste. All the world's nearly one billion hungry people could be fed on less than a quarter of the food that is wasted in the US, UK and Europe. And, according to Project Drawdown, reducing food waste is the number one solution to the climate crisis, coming above electric cars, solar power and plant-based food. I volunteer for an organisation called Olio, who redistribute waste food to prevent it from being thrown away. On December the 23rd, I collected over 150 yellow stickered items from two local Tesco stores, which weighed over 35 kilograms and would otherwise have been thrown away. I had fresh meat, ready meals, hummus, coleslaw, vegetables, bananas, all sorts of bread and bags and bags of prepared salad. I immediately listed the items on the Olio app and had people request it and pick up items from our home. There are no conditions about who can request. It's about preventing food waste, not food poverty, though often the two go hand in hand. One person, a single mum who collected, gave me a small gift as a thank you for volunteering, saying that because of the food she has collected from me, she's been able to afford to put her heating on. I managed to get rid of many items on Friday night and on Christmas Eve morning, though I still ended up with bags of salad which went on the compost heap. I often wonder what happened to the 12 baskets of food that were left when Jesus performed the miracle of the feeding of the crowd. It turns out that the leftovers were an important part of the story. Jesus asked his disciples to gather up what was left, saying in John 6 verse 12, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. He showed that food is valuable and that waste matters. By 2050, it is expected that 2.3 billion people will join the planet, which will require a 60 to 70% increase in global food production, or we could just stop throwing away our food. I believe that our challenge in 2023 is to do all we can to help prevent food waste, because in most developed countries, over half of all waste takes place in the home, so the blame doesn't just lie at the feet of the local supermarkets. We could plan our meals carefully so that we don't overbuy, not be afraid to use food that's past its best before date but is still edible, and be happy to consume wonky fruit and veg. 
Reducing our waste is one of the most simple things that we can do to live more sustainably and protect God's beautiful world. Let us pray. Lord, creator of the planet, thank you for the harvest, for the abundant food in the world and for those who produce what we eat. Help us to use the food which you provide wisely and responsibly to ensure that food is distributed more equally, food waste is reduced and the hungry are fed. Amen.